Thanks. <laughs> Stupid or something. So it's been a long time since I've done one of these, and considering they are the most viewed videos on my channel, that's probably not a good thing. So screw it. It's about time I gave you guys a full, updated budget list covering whatever I believe to be the top 10 budget decks in Duel Links at the moment. Now before we get into it, I've got a few things I've got to cover first. Firstly, there'll be zero gameplay shown in this video outside the meme in the intro. This is simply because I'm going to be covering 10 different decks. That would mean a minimum of at least 10 gameplays. My normal content uses only about 5 to 7 and contains way less talking than this video will. And these videos are normally 20 minutes long, and I'm not trying to upload a 40 minute video here. But this video will be rehashing a ton of decks I have already showcased on my channel before, so I'll leave links in the description under each deck list and deck code to videos I have created on the deck, so if you think you might be interested or simply want to learn more, or just see gameplay on the deck list, feel free to check out each of those videos I'll leave in the description. Secondly, please do upgrade the obvious stuff in these decks, as they are obviously budget lists, so if you see a bunch of cheap back row or back row removal, please do the obvious thing and upgrade it to the currently more staple generic ultra rares if you have them. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out what these upgrades are, just check the popular tab in game. I don't want to see anyone using a spiritualism when they own a copy of MST or Cosmic Cyclone, that's dumb. Thirdly, the general criteria for what I consider budget in this video is one full main box or two full mini box rotations. There'll be quite a few exceptions to this rule throughout the video, but generally this is the rule I've tried to follow. And if you guys still consider this too expensive, I'm going to be honest here, you're probably playing the wrong game, as there has to be a cutoff somewhere otherwise your decks will just suck, and I feel like one main and two minis is quite reasonable for a cutoff, especially if you get some good RNG and utilise the reset button well. No matter what though, you'll probably still have to do a bit of grinding, as that's just the nature of a free to play game. And last but not least, these videos take way longer to make than my normal content, as I have to gather a lot of lists and write quite a large script. So I'd appreciate a bit of support with likes and comments on this video, and if you do enjoy the content I make, I would very much appreciate a sub to the channel, especially considering I'm kinda close to 40k subscribers at the moment. It's completely free, and you can unsub at any time. Alright, let's get into it. By the way, these decks won't be showcased in any particular order, but I will give you guys a general rundown on the strength and cost of each deck as I do go through them. So starting with the obvious choice that every single one of you expected, Lunar Light. Now I won't cover these guys too much, as I've just done a full dedicated free to play video on these guys not too long ago, and I'll leave a link to that video down below. But to give you guys a brief summary, this is the deck I generally recommend to most new players first. It's very cheap with 90% of it coming from the same Judgment Force box. It's not the strongest deck list on this list, but it's definitely the strongest deck for its cost, being a deck that you will see making tons of top cuts in tournament play. Its general gameplay revolves around two fusion strategies. Cat Dancer, who combined with Crimson Fox, can lead to a pretty nasty OTK, and Saber Dancer, who is basically just an untargetable beat stick with an insane amount of attack due to its effect. Like I said though, I have a full dedicated video to this deck on my channel already, so if you're interested, check it out in the link down below. Next up we have Amazonas. Now of all the decks I feature on this list, this one is definitely one of the cheapest, considering their main ultra rare is a rank ticket, and the rest of the deck is either level up rewards, or more rank tickets, and a bunch of rares. But in saying that though, of all the lists in this video, this one is definitely the deck that could use a bit of a back row upgrade, as it relies on it the most. I have done a video recently on this deck covering what I believe to be the most optimal back row, so feel free to check out that if you want a general guide on what your final list should be looking like once you have built the budget version. As the only thing that really needs an upgrade is the back row, as the core of this deck stays the same. This deck's playstyle is a very heavy control style, that revolves around using Princess to search for Onslaught, which banishes any monster that dares touch an Amazonas you control, which is pretty convenient since Princess can also summon Queen who can stop your monsters being destroyed by battle. One more important thing to note here is the extra deck for this deck is completely optional, and it's not required in the slightest. It's there because you technically can summon stuff, but you can just about never go into it anyway, so you don't actually need it, so if you feel like cutting it to make your deck cheaper, feel free to do so. Next up we have what I would consider one of the top two strongest deck lists on this list, but sadly, 
It's also one of the hardest, and definitely the decklist I know the least about. Ritual Beast. So this decklist will take you two full rotations of the Spirit of the Beast box, which is a little on the pricey side, but will give you a ton of value, as this deck has been out since 2019 and is still meta relevant now, popping in and out of the top tiers multiple times. That all being said, I don't know a huge amount about the deck, as it's basically just a massive combo deck based around fusions that are summoned without polymerization and generates a ridiculous amount of value, but I haven't really played it that much. So I'm not going to speak much more on the deck, and I personally don't have a video I've uploaded covering it, but I will leave a link in the description to a very detailed, timestamped, hour-long guide created by Dual Links Meta less than a week ago that I highly recommend checking out if you have any interest in the deck at all, as it covers literally everything you need and more. Next up, we have everyone's favourite discount dart magician, Galaxy Eyes. Now be warned. This deck 100% relies on the exclusive skill Galaxy Photon, which is from Kite. Not only that, but it also requires a bunch of level up rewards from him. So if you missed the unlock event for Kite, as of this moment I believe you cannot unlock the character, and cannot build this list. But don't fret, he should become available again soon for unlock. The rest of the deck though all comes from two rotations of the mini box, Photons of Galaxy. So if you are looking for a very brain dead easy deck that takes absolutely zero skill and has the most one dimensional playstyle ever, this is it. The entire deck is based around summoning any two light monsters, exceed summoning into Galaxion, then summoning Galaxy Eyes. This allows you to then either set or activate as many photon streams as possible, which by the way is searchable via your skill, which can banish all of your opponent's stuff. I also highly recommend if you do play this deck to try and get a hold of at least one copy of Galaxy Cyclone, as although it's expensive, it'll become searchable back row removal via your skill, which is very useful going second. I have a full video released recently on the optimal build for this deck, so I'll leave a link to that in the description if you are at all interested in seeing what you should be aiming for once you have built the budget list, or just want to learn more about the deck or want to see some gameplay in action. Next up, we have the deck that decides to play its turn during your opponent's turn. TG. Now just like Lunar Light, I won't be talking about this deck list too much, as I literally just uploaded an entire free to play guide video for this deck less than two weeks ago, and I'll of course leave a link to that in the description down below. This deck list is basically focused around creating as many board states as possible that involve the Synchro Summon of Star Guardian, plus a tuner monster, and a non-tuner, to give you all the materials required to special summon your insane boss monster Quarion which can banish up to 3 cards from a field or graveyard, and can actually be done during your opponent's turn, thanks to the effect of Star Guardian, making it very hard for your opponent to set up a board. Now keep in mind, although cheap, this deck does come with one very large extra cost to it, and that is of course the single copy of Quarion that is required for this decklist to be run, and it does not come in the box Antonomic Theory, where the majority of the TG cards come from. Outside of that though, you can just get the level up rewards from Antimi, which by the way, just like Photons and Kite, if you missed his unlock event, I'm afraid you'll have to wait for him to come back before building this deck. Next up, we have another deck that's been around for a very long time now. Six Samurai. This is another one of those decks that are on the list that I won't talk about too much, as again, not too long ago I uploaded a full free to play Six Samurai video with a deck list that's basically identical to this one. But to briefly sum up how the deck works, it's basically built around synchro summoning the deck's boss monster Xi'en, who is able to negate spell and trap cards, and combining this with a bunch of back crow to protect him, including Jewel Wield, which can return two cards your opponent controls to hand. This deck recently received a huge buff due to the release of Xyz monsters in general, as Xyz summoning rank 4s in this list is extremely easy, due to most of this deck being special summonable level 4s. The entire core of the deck is obtainable via Warriors Unite, but honestly, I would strongly recommend upgrading the back row and extra deck rank 4s for this one, as the better they are, the better we will find this deck performs. Next up, we have the other contender for the strongest deck on this list, Trimid. This deck sadly can be a little pricey, as it will require two rotations of the mini box Guardians of Rock, and on top of that you will also need to dig for a single copy of this deck's boss monster, Trimid Sphinx from Area of Sanctuary, and this is unavoidable, as honestly, this deck is ridiculously worse without him. But in saying that, the payoff for this list is fantastic, as this deck, just like Ritual Beast, pops in and out of meta quite often, and has topped many major tournaments in the past, even winning a few. 
This deck's playstyle is heavily control based, and spends most of its time gaining value out of swapping field spells for various different effects, before eventually summoning their main boss monster to finish the job. Of all the decks on this list, this one is probably the only one where you have the option to update the back row, but you don't really need to, as the back row used here is very unique to this deck, using the inart type trap pulse to remove your opponent's stuff, or continuous trap power sink stone which can essentially stop your opponent using monster effects by simply activating your trimid effects during your opponent's turn. Also important to note with this list is the extra deck is not required at all, it's just there because it's possible to summon, but you almost never use it, so feel free to cheap out on that one. Next up we have a deck that literally uses only monster cards, Super Heavy Samurai. This deck is quite literally all from one box, Future Horizon, outside the two copies of Kite Roid which are from a card trader which also means that upgrading this deck is extremely easy to do, as you simply just have to keep digging for more copies of the SR and Ultra Rares later on. This deck's playstyle generally ends up being very simple. Summon big Ooga Booga Synchro monsters that can attack whilst in defense position, most likely Stealth Ninja, who by activating his effect can attack your opponent directly, then equipping him with a bunch of dumb equipped monsters that increases defense by a shit ton, allow him to attack twice, and then just simply bopping your opponent in an OTK. The rest of the deck is just a bunch of searches or delay stuff like Kite Roid and Gear Gloves that allow you to delay until you can get the pieces required for this combo. Up next we have the deck I've been playing the most recently, Metaphys. This entire deck is very cheap, as you can basically get the entire core of it from one rotation of the main box Blazing Rose, and on top of that, the extra deck is completely unnecessary and therefore skippable. It's just there as an option since you can summon rank 4s, but you'll hardly use it anyway. The entire premise of this deck is banishing, whether that be banishing your own monsters to activate their various effects, including searching, banishing from deck, or special summoning your main boss monster Daedalus to banish your opponent's entire board, or even summoning Nemphis first to clear your opponent's back row, leaving the way for you to just swing in directly, all whilst hiding behind kite roids and veils to stay alive and easily activate Destiny Draw. The deck even has a searchable trap card, that allows you to banish even more stuff whenever a metaphys is banished. If you like the concept of banishing stuff, this deck is right up your alley. And finally, we have a deck that I quite literally have to include in here, otherwise my comment section will be filled with complete and utter rage for me not including the community's favourite waifus, Arrow Mage. Arrow Mage is the OG free to play deck, with a lot of its core coming from the card trader, and the rest of it coming later from the box Fortress of Gears. The deck is the definition of a grind deck, as you don't really run any boss monsters as such, you just aim to grind your opponent until he runs out of resources using a ton of value generating continuous spells and traps that gain ridiculous amount of life points whilst granting you a ton of effects, including removal, searching, graveyard recycling, special summoning straight from deck, attack buffs, and more. Now recently this deck did take a bit of a hit with the ban list removing the deck's main skill balance, but I uploaded a free to play video on the deck not too long ago, which by the way, once again, link at the top of the description if you guys are interested, that utilises the skill level duplication to allow this deck to have access to Xyz cards, but honestly the deck doesn't really need them to perform, it just kind of performs by itself. If you do want to go down the Xyz route though, I do highly recommend picking up a copy of Corn, as it does some pretty nuts synergy with this deck, with the attack boosting that comes from Aroma being plant monsters. Alright guys, that's it for my list. Hope you guys get some use out of it, as this did take me quite a while to make. If you do enjoy the video, feel free to leave a like, and also consider subscribing to the channel for more content from me. It's literally free, and you can unsub at any time. Thank you for watching. Laters. Hey big brother, can I watch Spongebob? Shut up Mokuba, I'm busy flagging YouTube videos to compensate for the fact that I have an extremely small penis. Oh.